let me do a tag then sweat is a left uh, with jackets okay and share screen share screen share screen all right sick sick all right so what what are you trying to get out of like these games i guess is the first my first question um well i'm trying to look for like kind of like the overarching game plan and like i'm trying to look for like when it's you know like clear like the spots that s fat's looking for and when he decides to like make his decisions mm -hmm. um because ty told me to we had played one day and he's like i'm playing s fat later so you should go watch those games uh you know just to kind of like compare contrast and i was actually surprised uh all the stuff that i was doing uh -huh. I, I thought i was going to be doing like you know like you know, very little of the same stuff but there was actually a lot of pieces that i had already but then there was like parts of sfat's game that you know he's just like overall like way way cleaner of yeah. a player and then but he's also had he also has like this extra layer of like neutral game and like you know he's played all these matchups at such a high level that he's got like the second nature decision making i guess to make to, to give you like one really really specific example for instance um like i would like go for a drill in neutral on marth mm -hmm. and i would almost always instinctually shine after to try and get a follow up and i noticed sfat like never does that he'll always just go for a grab like out of the drill now i don't know if that's only versus ty because he picked up on that he was always buffering shield mm -hmm. after the drill or what or if it was just like a like a he's gonna do that until ty adjusts kind of thing but that was like one thing that i noticed among like a you know some other shit that he was doing he's also really good at catching marth in the air but yeah that's kind of what i'm looking for because like i have like this preconceived idea of what i should be doing versus chic but it's like obviously like i i need to dig a little deeper in like what i'm trying to do i feel like i also don't um i just don't do a lot of the like obvious stuff that you should be doing versus chic like ccing all the not all the time but like ccing in spots that you should and not uh getting zero to a hundred plus percented just because you're holding in type of thing but there's like other stuff that i'm sure i'm missing too so i'm just looking for so looking for you, those when spots. you say you have like a preconceived uh, idea of what you're supposed to do against chic what mm -hmm. what ideas do you have and where do you feel that game plan is falling short um i feel like i feel like i know like it's kind of also similar to marth in that uh she's like wave shinable uh -huh. um so you can go for you know follow-ups out of shine where she's on the ground <clears throat> uh into like grab or up smash like that uh and it's even easier to like do versus her than marth um, so like looking for stuff like that and then uh, like, uh, you know, keep her in the air, keep her above you because she sucks at coming down. Um, she has kind of the exploitable recovery as well, mm -hmm. you know, as long as you're like good at uh, flow charting the recovery. Yeah. I just feel like where I'm falling short is probably in neutral. Um, I like I give up I give up openings like kind of easily uh talking about like the second page thing that you were yeah. talking about last time i feel like i'll like my spot that i pick is a step back and i either get like wave dash back or dash back grabbed or something like that um like i know for a fact that's like a part of the matchup that i'm messing up okay that makes a lot of sense can you remember the spots that you're getting wave dash back or dash back grabbed from so, like, like on the stage like, specifically, or no? Like, can you remember uh, like what sorts of situations lead into it? Um, it'll tip. It'll typically be something like you know, like we're clearly in neutral, like far away from each other. Like maybe Sheik's like charging needles or something to like trying to get me to come in, mm -hmm. and then I'll do like the brain lit nair. That's very bad, and then they they just like dash back, grab me, right? Okay, so it's not really like from a whip punish, it's just like you think you're doing like a way to uh, react full mirror. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
that makes sense. Or like any aerial. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, how they just react to the jump at that distance, right? So. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. Actually, mute this. Uh, let's see. So neither of us have watched this set before. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Please. Okay. Okay, so let's see. So one thing you probably want to look at based off of that discussion is like how like SFAT's like how far SFAT is whenever he starts like his actual approaches. Because mm -hmm. like uh he'll prop he'll probably like jump from really close or do a lot of running shine at that low percent, uh like this. Yeah, I, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's just like trying to be safe or whatever. Right. Yeah. That was pretty unsafe back here. He is a pretty safe boy, for sure. His platform movement, I guess maybe not as much in this matchup as versus Marth, but like his his platform neutral game is actually was super clean and really good. Like, you know, yeah. being able to use the fox full hop to make people like feel like it's broken type shit. Yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, I've never seen him do like that. Okay, cool. So, jump up on the platform, runoff thing. So, some ideas from watching this. So, notice the spots where he jumps in from. It's like, or he starts approaching from. It's really close. He uses like a lot of running shine. And like sometimes he just like outright loses because he's trying to create a guessing situation where the Sheik player can't wait dash back to like make him whiff. But, and, like, the Sheik player just, like, oh, just forward tilts or just dash attacks at you. And then, mm -hmm. uh, and then he hits him. But, in general, I, it looks like this stock, at least he was, like, prioritizing, like, uh, just not getting, not giving away, like, really lazy grabs. Because it's uncommon for them to just, like, with a move and then grab a place or something. Right. So, if you watch, like, so he gets grabbed here. That was exactly what I was talking about, where with move, grab, and place. And then, uh, just like, he doesn't try to pressure her shield too much as well. But yeah, uh, so this is kind of like all just like, I don't know. I feel like they're just feel feeling each other. Out yeah, there. yeah. This like, feels like a, yeah, it feels like a warm up thing. They're not like going for like, they don't know like what each other is like kind of like going for yet. Yeah, and this so is they're not like, getting big attention. And this is kind of like one of the first real interactions where he does this run up shield, but like he always like tries to do stuff from really close. Mm -hmm. Like that was the only exception where he did kind of a big one, but that was running shine, so it's like running up to do stuff really close, which is like a bit silly because I think like the lasers get a lot of nothing done for a long time, and then he starts like actually fighting him here. And then suddenly, and then like he ends up taking the stock first. Like once he stops, like being like, "Oh, I'm gonna shoot lasers." Like right. look at that whenever he actually approaches with this shine there. Right. But like, look at how close he is whenever he starts jumping. He's like right mm -hmm. here. Whenever he does his shine and then his jump, whereas like you know if you know if Spark were right here and then he started nearing in from here, that just makes it really free to hit. Mm -hmm. So that's that gonna be sense. something pretty important. Yeah, and like even like this spot where I mean this is him angling to catch Sheik's sledge dash, but it's also just like close enough so that uh she can't react. She has to like make a guess on what Fox is gonna do. Because of where he was positioned for the ledge dash. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And the same thing here where it's like, oh go back and then this <laughs> distance. Yeah. I think he reacted like, to Sheik's jump. Word. Spark getting a little swingy. Yeah. Because he knows. So he's swinging a lot because he knows that Asphat is like coming in really aggressively and trying to get close. So Spark's trying to like stuff him out. Which makes, you know, Asphat playing a little more back a little bit better.
like now that Spark is being a lot more swingy just because S Fat is running up, running up to him every time he jumps, mm-hmm. then uh S Fat has already like I guess he's like already counter adapted. And now these yeah. lasers are like so much more meaningful. Yeah, I guess a big difference I'm already noticing is how much S Fat's on the platforms and kind of like above Sheik versus like how I remember like typically like remember playing the matchup like i'm pretty grounded i think yeah i I like the grounded approach a lot but i think he's like doing a really good job of i do think he's doing a really good job of using the platforms though i'm not sure like that was the biggest difference i noticed like how how well he can actually use wave landing and shit on the platforms to like mix up whether or not he's actually jumping in or if he's going to go to the platform and well, it's just scary because it's like this is also like how you get wrecked too, right? Like if she just can't yeah. see you moving the platform one time. Mm-hmm. But like a lot of his like actual approaches are all grounded. You know, they're run up grab, run up shield, running shine. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I don't it's kind think of just... he's really like gone in for like a near raw neutral or even a down air. Right. So like all of the platforms maybe is just like. Maybe that's just like smoke and mirrors, and he's just like finding a way to stay like outside of the range of hitboxes. But all of his right. actual approach options are all grounded options. Yeah, yeah, Ex- that's yeah, exactly. Like he's he's so good at using the platforms to like kind of like See? make Running you feel shine. like you can approach. Yeah, running shine twice there. Those were his two choices, and then he just like kind of comes up. Oh, that was the one time he jumped in. All right, let's see this distance he jumped in from. Right here. Okay, so this distance right here. So mm-hmm. yeah, this this seems like it would be unreactable distance. Oh, nice crash cancel too. Okay, he didn't blow chart that correctly. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a uh, weird. And I think he just like really prioritizes not getting shield grabbed. Right. Or not getting like near it or whatever. Yeah, this distance also is unreactable. So like if you look at this distance, it's like smaller than the battlefield side platform. Mm-hmm. This is probably about like, I don't know, like maybe like stadium platform length. Okay. So if it's stadium platform length, then uh maybe this is like your unreactable distance and you don't choose and you should be willing to like run up until you're this close to Sheik before you do an aerial or before you decide to do an aerial or you decide to do like grab or running shine and uh from here he does like this drift back down air but like I think this is also like this is a good enough spot where you could just near into the corner as well. right I th- yeah, that's kind of something that I'm still uncomfortable with too. Is like closing the gap enough before I actually commit. Like I feel like I commit like yeah, way you just commit soon. really early, especially against characters like Sheik and Marth, who like to kind of back off in response to you coming in. <laughs> yeah, right. And then like you know they're like looking for you to do a really reactable aerial. So if you just like make your goal to get inside to the range where they can't react anymore and they have to take guesses then you can then you can get like some of like your advantage back right because fox is really short range so uh mm-hmm. it's really important for him to not get zoned out like that yep <clears throat> that's kind of the conversation of why people are uh, saying fox ain't the best anymore yeah, he has really short range, but yeah, you know, he's fast, so he can kind of extend his range that way. Right, but even even if you take like his max like short hop forward aerial range, it's still yeah, it doesn't go very. It's far. still a little stubby. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't go that far. I still think Fox. Yeah, I think eh. Fox is really good. Uh, yeah, no in my else. heart, I think he's the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fox is probably the best. Once we figure out how to get faster reaction times, he'll be the best again. When you take the pill. Yeah, exactly. 
He's like all up on the platforms. Yeah, he kind of is, but like then he gets in trouble with like that up tilt grab, right? If mm-hmm. if Spark had executed that correctly, and I think like a lot of these lasers, he doesn't really get all that much. Oh, this was a platform sequence where he got a big opening though. Yeah, that bear was. was it felt random, but I feel like it's not. He was just kind of like planning on approaching in that moment, and then he got he got Spark doing something. Yeah. So what was Spark doing? Um. Oh, he wait, wait. Uh. Maybe did Spark mess up his input here? It looked like Spark was up airing to like read. Maybe a, oh, maybe this catches a runoff. Maybe Spark fucked up mm. uh, a full hop that was meant to catch like this kind of thing, or maybe mm. uh, he did this up air to try to catch Sfat running off the platform, which is like I don't think. Because, like, Esfet hasn't, like, been running off the platforms very much. He, like, kind of jumps off of them a lot in mm-hmm. this game. So I don't, I'm not really sure what Spark is doing in this spot. He's looking at himself. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, Spark is just kind of trying to, like, zone Esfet out. Wow. Okay, that was almost a good flow chart. It's like I like all of this up to yeah, up till that drop shine. Yeah, I feel like he didn't have to go for the second shine. Yeah, he could have just, just like grabbed. grabbed. Yeah, if you go grab the ledge there, it's fine. But I mean, not even even shine spiking chic doesn't. It doesn't kill her always right there. kill her. It doesn't yeah. always kill her. Yeah. She has to be pretty far off. Okay, so this is a spot where Sfet gets punished for doing a jump. Ooh. So this distance is just like he comes down with a full hop. This is pretty lazy. He didn't have to. I think he. I think he double jumps. Yeah. Out corner, out the yeah. corner. So Sparks like, oh, free. Yeah. Yep. So like he does this full hop and then Spark goes. <sighs> Yeah, he dashes underneath in response to the on reaction to the to the double jump, probably. But like, Sfat probably could have been fine if he just like double jumped to the top platform here. Mm-hmm. Definitely, uh, I think that's Sfat getting pretty greedy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't really like how Sfet is playing uh, a lot of the neutral too much. It feels like he just like it feels like he did a lot of like, <laughs> dangerous like dicking around on the platforms, and it's just like he got yeah. like one or two only, only like one or two good openings off of like all the platform stuff. Even though generally he stayed pretty safe, I don't think it helped him actually hit Spark that much. And then like. And then just like the one or two time, and then just the few times that he got caught coming off the platform, like where Spark got that up tilt grab, I think like Spark just didn't tech chase him, which is like, maybe that's just credit to SFET's defense though. True. Okay, yeah, I like this a lot more. This is a lot more of an approach that I kind of expect to see. Where, so yeah, let's watch from the beginning of this game where he's like just getting closer and closer and every time Sheik jumps he feels confident to run in as long as he's good at crouch canceling so like this distance again that's the same distance look how short it is oh it could have gotten grabbed but that's fine Yeah, but you're like you see, it's like, like kind of jumping. The laser is just like the doing lasers. nothing. They don't do anything. Yeah. Like all of his damage, he's gotten like what six damage from lasers and eaten the barrier. Right. And he finally gets a hit. It's like weak neutral air. And then uh, look at how he gets this opening though. Like he just he empty just hop. does an empty hop and grabs, and it's just like, well, you probably could have done this the whole time anyway. Right. Oh, that was. That was These not nares. A good nair. That was not a good nair. Uh, oh, 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 some, oh. Tr- some turny edge guard. Yeah, trying to blow his mind. 
I like the shine wave dash back because it catches it beats roll really hard. So like the problem with shine grab, right, is that uh I mean if they just roll off the shine, then mm. you get dunked on. But he just wave dashes back to try to cash the roll. But oh man, what did a shine clank with? Down smash. Nice. But yeah, this is also like, so this is a kind of distance that he uses where, uh, and you can do this against Smart too, where every time he is at this length, so he sees a jump as he's dashing back. So I, so he was like dashing back to avoid, uh, he was dashing back to avoid if Spark would boost grab or dash attack here. And he mm -hmm. sees that Spark actually jumped here. And at this distance, he just on reactions to the jump. As soon as he sees the jump, he just turns around and then comes in. He probably meant, might have meant to like uh, just up smash here, but he just like runs in as soon as he just sees a jump from that distance mm -hmm. and tries to get really underneath her. Sure. Okay. Easy. Yeah, and then, so this is what I was talking about, where it's like, well, sometimes you just get hit for, like, trying to get this close. So he's this distance again, right? Mm -hmm. Again, slightly smaller than a battlefield side platform. And he tries to run in to do, like, a running shot or a grab. And sometimes you just get hit for it. So it's, like, kind of, you know, it's the back and forth fighting game thing. But it's just, like, uh, if forward tilt is, he has, a Spark has to, like, make a read here. And it's a lot less free than just like oh look at him he is nearing i will forward tilt now right well he, yeah he just picked forward tilt because that's like the, that was the rps situation again right yeah yeah and he like yeah. wins rps oh, this time. no right sometimes that's just how it be yeah and you can see how like him jumping from this side again the same distance so this is like the kind of distance he just probably just tries to aim to stay at neutral the whole time mm -hmm. it makes his like full hop more safe because it's just like you can't react to whether something on the way up if something's going to be a short hop or a full hop like from this distance you don't know like it's just a guess right so it feels like fox as the initiator has like a lot more he has a lot more options there and she has to like kind of pick one thing that uh beats a lot of things that is why i think the lasers are shitty just like i don't know this didn't really do anything eventually you just got hit for it right like they're good if you can use them to like make someone come to you but yeah I don't they're uh, not like it's not like it's not like you can just can't it's people used to just be like oh yeah you just camp with lasers and you win it's yeah. like no, I, no. I, don't, I don't think spark is like somebody who's like gonna get out <laughs> right exactly which is interesting why s5 feels like he's like lasering so much bro spark is so dumb for this look at this look at this grab what are you doing <laughs> I, and this is like a common <laughs> fox edge grab, I've been right? there where you just like stand right here bro this grab is so dumb that's so bad he was on the platform <laughs> yeah that that's was actually, actually terrible that's how you can tell it's just like oh he's really not looking right oh that was right. so dumb <laughs> that's actually so and bad he just gets fucked for it <laughs> uh Yeah, so like in these spots, like so Spark is like so maybe the one the the good thing about the platform play that I didn't think of is just like it encourages Spark a lot to kind of like try to jump to catch Esfat out of the air. So then, mm -hmm. based off of that, uh, Esfat has more opportunities to like try to run in with Crouch underneath whenever Spark jumps. So that's like maybe uh, like a thing because like that's what was... happens here, right? Where it's just like 
he's been going up a lot so spark is trying is just like i don't know he's just like tossing out aerials trying to catch him and then he just like runs underneath him right here and gets a crouch that maybe he wouldn't get otherwise mm -hmm. it was conditioning the whole time maybe i i don't know you have to ask him <laughs> i don't know his like intentions i mean anyway like i i think it's like not that good but <laughs> no no I, know. I was like half joking yeah yeah i know but it's just like i don't know maybe i like that down tilt Yeah, using down tilt. Oh. Pretty crazy new stuff. <laughs> oh my god. That edge guard is so bad. The spark played These... so poorly. Alright, nice reaction. Both, both of them, really. Like, neither one of them can edge guard each other. Yeah, it seems like this whole set. They're kind of struggling. Uh, this is top 8 melee, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. top eight melee these are the eight best players <laughs> displaying their skills yeah so uh why they got here <laughs> so this is kind of like uh the counterplay where spark full hops instead and then he just throws like a late air needle and gets a grab instead of doing an aerial which is what he's been doing the whole time mm -hmm. so maybe like they air needle more often if uh if you don't use the platforms i'm not sure Okay, let's see the distance of this aerial, even though it didn't connect. So again, yeah. same distance. Maybe if he had an air there, it would have worked. Ooh, I'm trying to get him to come off. Oh, okay. So this is also a smart little situation right here. So right here, Spark is like right here, and then he's like waiting for SFAT to come off. So what does SFAT do? He just very safely runs off the left side of the platform instead and then doesn't fall into like getting forward tilted or whatever that's good smart mm -hmm. play and then just like running off like this you know you can just this opens up like once you open it once you run off like this then it you just like change it and then you can feel you can even feel free to go back up right would you say that running off the platform right there is better than like shield dropping in the middle or like even you know uh, shield dropping in the middle is fine. It's okay. just like running off is like the maybe like the quote unquote safest thing you can do just because like uh, it's the gaps. hardest. Yeah, so, it's yeah. hardest for Sheik to get there. But if you read that Sheik's just going to stay in the middle, then of course shield dropping here is superior. But like uh, you might be concerned if like what if she just randomly dash attacks right here? Then running mm -hmm. off to the left avoids all of it for sure. Okay, where, where is the snare come from? I want to see that. Oh, okay. It is from the slide off, and then Spark wasn't ready, kind of. But he did a crouch. <laughs> yeah. I live for those moments. Nice. The, the CC battle. Oops. <clears throat> is good di he's that's, yeah. that's really good at di out on yeah, forward tilt that's really impressive <laughs> whoa yeah so sparks this is, stuck. Close, this is how close he gets in the scrambles right he's basically like just scrambling the whole time and fox should be favored in dunce because, like, what you really want to get is, like, you want to, like, win a scuffle or a scramble like this. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Just no, kidding. But he's not, though. Uh, Damn, that was such a long game, actually. Yeah. You see how long that game took? It yeah, was, like, a six-plus like, six minute. Yeah, or no. they're just, like, dancing around each other half the time instead of actually trying to hit each other. Right. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... What was I saying? Yeah, you just, like, try to win a scuffle, and then you turn into juggle, and then you just, like... Try to catch Sheik 
coming down, like get a good read on her, following with up tilt or whatever, and then you just go to town, right? Mm. Yeah, look, look how close this one is too. Yeah, as Fat's feeling confident, he's just like, oh, okay, yeah. laser shine. Uh, yeah, I guess he kind of reacted. The, though. Once he got the launcher like this, you just do like whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess he's dead here. That sucks, but it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't really change that. Like, yeah, it was just like, you know, he was like just get get really close and then try to get an unreactable situation for Sheik. Win the RPS, you get a launcher, and then just go. Yeah. Which is like, I think whenever you like try to, if you try to like dash dance a lot from far away, that's where you can get. It. That's like where the matchup can get kind of hard. I think, like, the, the things that can make the matchup hard for Fox are, like, if you're going to dash dance from far away, then uh, it can be kind of scary uh, if you don't get close enough on your... If you aren't able to get close enough to have unreactable approaches. And also, if you start, like, trying to trick Sheik a lot with, like, your double jumps to, like, sneak a hit in, that's where Sheik really starts farming you. Hmm. But I think the matchup is a little bit better played, like getting kind of close to them and then uh, going mainly for a grounded approach. Now you can see, like, even though it seems like in all these spots, like, Spark could literally just be like, nah, and then four tilt him. It's like hard <laughs> for him to make this guess. Oh, I was literally about to say it was like I haven't really seen Spark throw out a dash attack in neutral yet, and he just did, and he got owned. Yeah. <laughs> he got fucking owned. Yeah, I mean, this is like kind of also at the distance where it's like if you play far, then it's easier to get dash attacked too, because like you right. give her the space, and she can dash attack you. But if you're like like uh, closer than battlefield platform distance, then mm -hmm. they probably don't feel to feel very safe to like just run up and dash attack like that usually dash attack is like coming from a little bit further oh that's a cute trick oh uh, okay like if you look at this whole distance like if you just like ignore the up and down like this distance right here is just like do you really feel safe to try to dash attack here is she right yeah it's too no, scary, no. right? Like, she might just, like, catch you trying to dash. Like, look at that. Look at this distance. He's always right there. Mm -hmm. uh, he does a pretty good job of, like, the horizontal spacing. Like, this distance. Then just, like, the whole time. Like, even right here, whenever there's, like, a weird shield situation. And then, like, Spark gets out. He's like really quick to capitalize on, oh, Spark went this way, and then he shoots a laser, and then he goes back to like immediately trying to establish like the same spacing. Mm -hmm. That's what's really good about his play this set. Yeah, that's oh, definitely. No, it's oh, okay. So let's see this uh -oh. dash attack. Let's see this dash attack. I'm it's curious. definitely from, from further away. Or. It looks uh, pretty similar. I got it's see like, it. yeah, it's like right there. Yeah. Oh, he was so close to punishing it, though. This is probably, I mean, it, it happened to work. Like, maybe she just has to have, like, have the nuts to call you out. Right. She was, like, right there, like, right at the edge of where yeah. Fox would be dashing back in. But if he, like... What if he did? If didn't Fat move? decided, yeah, exactly. If Fat decided to not dash back in or pivot, yeah, you then see, he turned around. She gets owned. What if? Mm -hmm. she, yeah, what if S Fat had like shined or up tilted here? Maybe she loses. Yeah. All right. Um. <clears throat> that's good. I guess we can. Pretty sure S Fat still still wins. Yeah, uh, poor Spark just like didn't edge guard a single time. <laughs> yeah, he really didn't. <laughs> oh, what was that up B? I don't know. They're just freaking out right now. That's the like I should have killed him, but I didn't up B. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, you were about to say something before. Oh yeah, I was gonna say just the other, the other, uh, the only other like you know like matchup idea that I kind of had going in because we were talking about that earlier is uh, fiction kind of had like a little like piece you see or like a little like I don't know like a mini rant on like Fox versus Sheik and how he thinks like well, it just shouldn't be winnable for Sheik guys i mean come on and he's like but his you know how fiction is but yeah, yeah but like he is what he was trying to say was like a lot of sheik's good options um if i guess if like she's playing proactive and not necessarily like reactive are a lot of the stuff that she can do that's good is in place and she doesn't have that much drift so it's like she's kind of in the same zone anyway but like literally like f tilt grab you know, dash attack even. They're all, like, very much, like, in the same spot, like, stuck options. So he said that if you can just, like, stay within those ranges where if Sheik's, like, willing to kind of, like, RPS or, like, just throw start, like, throwing stuff out because they think you're going to come in, he's, like, literally all you have to do is, like, dash back and then go in with, you know, one of Fox's many aerials or options. Yeah. It was kind of like a... <clears throat> big uh generalization of the matchup that he couldn't even really articulate his point while he was like playing a chic right yeah just so happened like the person he was playing wasn't doing the stuff that he was talking about but he did kind of have a point where fox's movement is superior when you're playing in that range and sfat was kind of playing in that range now spark was not actually like doing anything like yeah he wasn't really the, the ground this time, that right? proactive but he was yeah. jumping a lot and then you kind of saw like if s is indeed playing that range then it suggests like you know sheik's uh approach with the aerials is like even more stubby than foxes you know so right. uh that's like uh because of the lack of drift right yeah exactly so he's even able to react to the jumps and done spots if he's like primed and looking for it yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I think it's like probably true, and like something like Drug Fox says about the matchup is like, basically what Sheik does is like, she is like Sheik will like spam will like spam fair and then like run away options after the fair because she has like you know like it's like her tilts are really big or whatever mm -hmm. like you're saying so it's just like she'll like do a fair and then she'll like forward tilt or she'll wave dash back. Or she'll dash, yeah. or she'll dash back, and uh, like the forward air kind of like creates that zone, and like the the speed. It's kind of like the beginning of a string. That's kind of how I've been thinking about it. Like it's like the, the a safe beginning of a string, and like a lot of characters have this. Yeah. And it's kind of like playing about playing around what you think's about to come next. Yeah, and, and the. Yeah, this and the speed oh, shit. at which you can get the four tilt out is like what makes the rest of like the string, like what you're talking about, like the string and neutral, kind of safe because the four tilt is fast, so you can catch them coming in. So they kind of, uh, at certain distances, they have to just like respect your ability to four tilt, which gives which opens up the ability for Sheik to do the forward air. And then start walking forward after it, which is where she's going to make all of her money in approaches. It's just like once you establish the threat of like doing your really safe strings, then they start respecting it. That's when you can start doing the unsafe shit and go get them. But we mm -hmm. didn't, never really saw Spark like, uh, and yeah. I know he does do this sometimes, but it's like literally what he could have done in some spots would be like do a forward air and then just YOLO forward and grab. Mm hmm. And we never really saw him do that in that set. Because and, yeah, and never really. Right. Deep. But yeah, maybe he was like really scared for whatever reason. But like that's like something that he needed to be willing to proactively do. Like clearly, we said that it's like, you know, oh, if he just like did more approaching ground hitboxes, then maybe it would work. Yeah. So uh, this this matchup, uh, I know from. So it's kind of funny because you know, like Spark beat Hbox at LACS or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
but so it was supposed to be like oh loser of spark and hbox fights fat goku but mm-hmm. then spark beat hbox so then uh but instead of being like oh hell yeah i beat hbox he's like oh hell yeah i dodged fat goku <laughs> <laughs> wow so i mean basically fat goku makes this matchup looks pretty gross uh just like and it kind of it's kind of interesting because it shows that melee isn't like a linear game where you know we're like deconstructing like all of the like kind of like the spacing options and stuff and with fat goku uh the thing that he does really well in this matchup is he does two things really well he does the ambiguous di really well and he goes really fast like right. he's he just like so like i think for sure like Sheik's struggles a lot more with uh like just like fast fox than she does with campy fox like campy mm-hmm. fox is kind of like where you get opened up with like random dash attacks or they catch you with forward tilt or random aerial because you know you're like trying to run away and be clever and shoot lasers but like whenever but whenever you're like fast fox and you're just on top for the whole time um it's just like disgusting mm-hmm. and hopefully uh fat goku will get to showcase this i think i think he do i kind of skipped to the end and looked at the score yeah. it was either like we watched bark again or he played Dreffen pretty recently too yeah so i didn't know which one would but yeah you can better. see like kind of like the difference in the approaches already but just like still like how close he gets before mm-hmm. he approaches he just like tries to stay on top of him the whole time. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's not good. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's that's not good. Nice. But yeah, it's just like the distance. He already edge guarded. <laughs> yeah. And it's this just like, is a... like the kind of thing where it's just like if you're a fast fox, it's just like, oh, he tried to just YOLO forward. And then it's just like, no. <laughs> Punch. <laughs> yeah. It's already like w- a much different pace. It's worlds different, right? Yeah. Where S Fat, it's just like all the S Fat games were like super long. Right. I mean, Sfat's got to pace himself since he only eats vegetables, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, so he got grabbed off Uh-oh. the reversal for this edge guard. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, Spark doing some dumb shit. Right underneath, and then just like, I don't know, he's just like, Press hit boxes like as fast as possible a lot of time. It just like yep. works. <laughs> well, that's Fox, baby. I mean, I mean, C- Steven uh, Fagrick is a really fast player, though. So, like, I don't know. Yeah. If you can be this fast in tournament, it's like definitely if like someone's you. playing off. Ba- yeah. If someone's playing off balance and you're just like putting your shit out, it's like. You can just run them over, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to. For someone to like wake up sometimes or it's like easy to be shook. yeah so you see like how like all of this is just like so unreactable where it's like he's uh displaying a lot more of like the approaching mix-ups than s does like s kind of like mixes up it's like oh like drift back uh drift back with the down air or just like he mostly just like gets close and approaches with grab or running shine or just like, or otherwise, just like goes to the platforms. But you can see like, Fagoku's options here with the approach are much more variable. Mm-hmm. Also, I guess I want to see like, didn't you say he does like ambiguous di? Yeah, yeah, he does on a the, lot on the of grabs. I wonder stuff. how how do you? I wonder how that's how do you do that? Is uh, it like a specific? Is it like a notch? 
it's like uppish. I don't think it's it's a notch. It's up and then like slightly like it's then slightly forward or behind. You get to pick which. Well, let's see if I mean he'll probably get grabbed again. So yeah. <clears throat> and then like he's just like it's so funny. He's like blatantly reading a dash attack here. This is like another thing to discourage Sheik from just like yelling and like I don't know she could grab but that's even scarier. So he's just like. Oh, what am I supposed <laughs> to do? Yeah, look how close this whole time uh, he gets. So he just stays in this distance. Mm -hmm. And he's like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> Back throw. Yeah, it can't have been intentional. Whoops. Didn't mean it. Oh. Uh. Oh. Yeah, you can <sighs> see, like, in these games, like, it feels a lot, to me at least, it feels a lot more uncomfortable, uncomfortable with Sheik, for Sheik. Like, when I watch the games against SFAT, it's just like, yeah, SFAT won, and it's like, I guess it was pretty hard for Spark to hit him, but, like, it also didn't feel that easy for him to hit Spark. Whereas, like, that game, it kind of felt a lot more like, and you literally just see Fat Goku fuck up a lot, but it just, like, doesn't matter that much. It's just like, yeah, I just hit him with a move. Right, it's, yeah. He's just making his hits hurt. Okay, let's see. A lot more, and also just, like, playing in a way that's making Spark pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. All right, so let's see. So again, this distance still. That, but that's like one thing they have in common, right? They just like stay really close. Right. Which but, is a good thing. That's yeah. a definitely a good takeaway. But Fakuku has a lot less up and down. He's like just more trying to read uh, Sparks' options out of shield. Oh, so he tried to do the same thing here that we talked about Esfet doing, where so he sees Spark go up, right, and then, uh -huh. and then just like oh, run underneath and back air here, just get underneath him immediately. And he tried to do it again here, but uh, so he tried to get a whiff punish here, but Spark didn't fast fall his back air, so it was out a little bit longer than he thought. So that's something you have to be aware of. It's like the mix up between fast fall and no fast fall. Which is like, I don't know, you can't react to whether they're fast falling or not, so, uh, gotta guess. But the guess is in your favor. Mm. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. That a, so that was clearly a... behind. That's clearly behind. Ouch. Got him. Nice. Alright, nice little combo from Spark. Yeah. Uh oh. The crouch, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's good at crouching. <laughs> he just is like Was that even a was that even a crouch? Like it is ACI down. Oh, okay. So I guess he I don't know if he has he does the yellow stick down thing, but or he like maybe he reacted to getting there mm -hmm. and just held down immediately. That was huge. Yeah, and it's just like look how down holdy he is. That's like kind of what you're talking about, right? Where it's like, oh you need you want you are talking about it's like, oh you need to abuse uh crouch cancel more. Mm -hmm. yeah you can just like so what i would suggest for that is just like try like whenever you see chic jump react by running in and holding down like you don't need to get the true crouch you just need to oh that's ambiguous <laughs> you see this uh-huh wow you don't know if you have to turn around or not like <laughs> yeah yeah 
So now that you look, know what it looks like, you can just try to like replicate it in your practice. Right. You're pretty much just like trying to DI so that you're like kind of like landing in chic. Yeah. You yeah. look like you're going straight up, but it's like mm -hmm. the one coordinate difference between like turn around or not turn around is so subtle that you like can't tell the difference. And uh, so what like she can do to counterplay this that people bring up all the time is like, oh, well, Sheik will just like she just like wave dash back and yeah. then you wave dash back and then well then it doesn't matter because they go straight up and you just like get a grab but the thing is if you know that they're likely to like start wave dashing back a lot then you can that opens up tech in place because tech in place makes the regrab if they're going to put in a wave dash then it makes the regrab window for tech in place uh much uh it makes it much less lenient because you know the wave dash takes uh 13 frames right so <clears throat> that suddenly changes it from uh you know however long you have you just like standing there and looking at them so that's 26 frames but you spend 13 of the wave dashing it just makes the regrab so much harder so doing the ambiguous mm -hmm. di opens up a lot of the time if you do the ambiguous DIs and you like try a tech roll, then it starts opening up you doing tech in place. Right. There it is again. Yeah, yeah. So that was a this nice time he, grab though. And this time he just like he just like reads it. Damn that uh, yeah, that was a sick. But like grab. the fact that you can like turn it into a fifty fifty is like pretty right. nice, right? Instead of just yeah, that's... like, oh, if they're playing well, they get a re grab. Right, yeah, that's huge that it, it becomes a 50-50 instead of just, oh, I got grabbed, here we go. Yeah, and... Uh, Getting taken for a ride. If I can remember to, I will show you, like, there's also the ambiguous DI on the Marth chain grab that you can start doing, like, you know, everyone knows, like, oh, you can start shining out at, like, 18 or whatever the number is, 16, mm -hmm. who knows, maybe it's, like, as low as 12. But you can do ambiguous DI that makes him not know if he has to turn around or not well before that. And just, people just don't. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's been a it's been a struggle playing, you know. I've been playing Ty like pretty regularly throughout the couple weeks. Um, I don't know, for whatever reason, he likes to hit me up. Probably because it's like easy easy clippy farm. But like he said, I play I play good enough to like where he can't play lazy. Yeah, and but he good. can still like yeah, but he can still like work on new things. I mean, that's like an ideal practice yeah. partner in many ways. Like, yeah, ex exactly. And he's and you know, for me, it's like, of course, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it's a great, great yeah, person. Good player practice. And but also uh, your friends. Yeah. right, so exactly. It's, so it's not like you're like judging each other, <laughs> right? Which is good. Yeah, I mean, he I might mean that's important. I mean, that's <laughs> important. You know, that you aren't like, oh, what a shitty human being this guy is. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to like work on, it's been a struggle, but I feel like there's also like a, an optimal mash out spot. That's like not, I mean, you can start mashing out like pre mashing if you're like super low, but I think also like around like 30 or 40 or something, and maybe it's because he's going for two and not buffering the, after the pummels or something. But I feel like I, I start being able to like mash out consistently around like the 30 ish, 40 ish. Yeah. Even without pre mashing. And I don't know if it's because of. You're supposed know. to get one pummel every 35 if your opponent is mashing well. Um, so if he's going for two, it's pretty greedy. But mm -hmm. uh, also, like, yeah, pummel pummel throw should be a true combo, but people just don't do things to make it a true combo. Right. It's like a two-frame blank for Marth or something. Dang. But yeah, anyway, we haven't been watching this game too closely. I guess that's fine. Yeah, um, I think this... I think but yeah, look, look at the Spark wins again. this one. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah, you're basically just DI where it's... You're, you DI, like, right yeah. into... Yeah, I'm not sure, like, purple. why Spark jumped here. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, the jump didn't seem like he was getting anything done. It's just like you don't know if he's going to be in front or in back. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, okay. 
Oh, oh, with the... a chance. Oh, look at how close, oh. look how close he is again. This is the spacing. You want to just kind of like ingrain the spacing in your head as the mm-hmm. spacing for Fox Cheek, which is probably a lot closer than you thought it was. Yeah. Definitely. And like you don't need to do like super long dashes either. You can just like you see he just like spazzes out a lot really close. Yeah. The bad Goku special, apparently. Oh. Yeah. How unfortunate to have to go down in a set as a Sheik player and then have to come to this stage. Gosh, you murdered him. What happened? <laughs> he just didn't recover for some reason. You murdered him. I was like, right, got <laughs> I caught him jumping, him. and then up air, up air. Okay, he just, like, just, doesn't just, recover caught him. just caught him. Maybe he thought he had a double jump. Yeah. Yeah, this is like just catching sheet coming down. It's just like obviously going to be huge. Lol. And you can see, like, once you get to this oh, distance, no. if she jumps, like, unless if she, like, has a read, she makes you, and she swings early, kind of like what we were talking about, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like, uh, fiction thing was like, oh, she has to swing. It just, like, it almost feels like it doesn't matter much which hitbox you pick. You just, like, it, it's, it's, like, weird because, you know, you learn, you start learning all these things, right? As you play, you're like, oh, like, don't like don't near a cheek or whatever like this like it's really dumb like don't don't do this don't do that but then it turns out it's like oh you actually can do all this you just have to do it faster right and in the correct spacing yeah like look how like look how fast he is this spacing and then he just like i mean i don't think it's like (laughs) stupid per se but like I don't think look at how quick the brown fox (laughs) yeah I, i don't think he has to like I don't think it's stupid, like I said. I, I but you, it's noticeable, like, uh, like how little, like, which aerial he's picking matters. Right. It's just like, yeah, okay, go, go off the stage now. <laughs> so yeah, I think like, oh, if you want to like learn this matchup, then you just like get as fast as this and then you like watch him play it is like oh oh, i see no i mean watching this now it's like oh i see yeah where it's just like it's really i think a spacing thing like i feel like he's getting close enough to where those like second options after the fair like start to matter less right yeah he just gets right inside where he can like get a true yep. punch for a scramble and that game was like super dominant and you compare it a lot to like you know the s-fat game where he's like going around the platforms like oh he's, he's using being the super careful a lot. but it's just like i don't know maybe that's not the part that made him win you know <laughs> right maybe it is but like also maybe not <laughs> yeah like maybe it helped him in a like indirect way because he needed to use the platforms as s-fat to be able to win but it's like did they actually help yeah in the matchup and also to be probably fair, like i think s fat has a very like he plays uh almost all of his matchups in a way that's like very like replicable you know like it's a way that uh if you study it and you're good at it, like anybody can do it like this which is a very valuable thing to have it's a very learnable style where it's just like where it's like oh you're not as fast as Fat Goku is. Well, suck a fat one, idiot. You know, like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, eh, like, what, 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 what's really gonna happen here, right? Like, if you're just like not as fast as he is, then this just doesn't work, right? Mm-hmm. Which is like, but then eventually he runs into people where it's like they're playing, they know how to play within the reaction window. Yeah. So it doesn't. It ends up like it doesn't matter how fast Fox is anymore. I mean, it still matters because it like the mix-ups are like innately good for him or whatever. Right. But 
uh, it does make force him to have to like think and work a little bit harder uh, in terms of like how he gets in there instead of just like I'm getting mm-hmm. in there I'm good right but yeah uh, yeah it's just like something like that but yeah let me try to find the ambiguous DI uh, Marth box ambiguous DI Well, it's none of these images. <laughs> Monka TOS. Doing bad stuff to Marth 101. <laughs> yeah, that's a good joke. Purple, purple link. Hell yeah. Okay, this is some crap. Um... I wonder if I can find it. Oh. Marth versus Fox chain grab. Ambiguous <laughs> DI. There's that like deep th- butt. there's like literally a very like specific GIF I'm thinking of. That's like uh-huh. it's just like oh here it is. Or is it? Or is it? Is it? No, this is completely different. But it's basically an image like this that just shows, Uh like, the coordinates. And it's just, like, you can't tell, but it's, like, one coordinate over. And then standing regrab misses. They have to turn around. Interesting. And you can't do that at zero, huh? Uh, Or, uh, sorry, you can't pivot at zero. Yeah, exactly. You can do it before Marth can pivot. So, like, uh, it's a really good thing to go for. But people just, like... huge. DI away Huge. or something. I don't know why. <laughs> this now we might be we might be fifty nine. Uh, you know, forty one. Yeah, yeah. You get that percentage point back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's not sixty forty anymore. Holy shit! What's that gray one with the fucking book? Where written? Uh, it's like at the bottom row of your screen. This thing. The, yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think this is, is like this? the Sheik Notes thing. <laughs> I don't understand this? this, dude. What is this? Oh wait, it's a, okay. It's a flowchart. Uh, tech. Yeah. Roll away. <laughs> uh, grab. <laughs> it all all roads lead to grab. <laughs> right. It all goes to grab. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like some shit, dude. That's beautiful. I wonder if it's a Kadana image. Uh, Fox ambiguous di chain grab. <laughs> I wonder if I can find it. Like, couldn't they have put it in a much like better looking, like yeah, it does set, oh, set of lines? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, what the hell? That was some serious flow, I gotta say. All right. Well, I'll just like keep trying to look for it, and then I'll send it to you afterwards. I'll probably mm-hmm. post it in our talk. But uh, yeah. Hell yeah. This was good. Yep. Yeah, uh, put it up on YouTube. And yeah, just hit me up if you want to talk again. Cool. Thanks, Peace. Howard. Yeah, I'm going to look forward to Or I'm going to ask Ty. He probably knows. Yeah, he probably does. Cool, cool. Peace.